My guest, T. Blair. Today we got a look at the Tier 7 French Destroyer. Fantastic. Violet on the screen there. I got Vine Inspirations, Perk Slot 4. We got Incoming Dispersion, Camo, Incoming Dispersion, Mod Slot 3, Concealment Mod, Incoming Dispersion. So we have four alterations of the ship that are altering the incoming fire dispersion heading towards our ship. I don't know what the exact number is. It's about a 15 to 20 percent increase. So not only are we nullifying completely any accuracy build that the enemy might possibly be able to bake into their build, but we're pulling it further in the opposite direction. So very strong. I think the incoming dispersion builds are extremely underrated by most of the player base. Most of them just see offensive perks and they do completely offensive uh, builds, which is certainly an option, but I think Personally, I like the income dispersion quite a bit. Anyway, here we got a game on whatever this map is. We're going to be playing position C for pretty much the entire game here. I want to be highlighting the Fantask as itself, but also the class of Destroyer that we would consider this. It's not one that we were able to cover during our strategy guide series. Didn't get around to it, um, but I was going to call it a diversion type of a Destroyer, and we're going to see that in action here. Basically, we're going to do what we can to capture C. However long that takes, doesn't really matter. We don't need to force the situation, but we're going to try and get on there, capture it. Once we capture it, we're going to use our ship's abilities uh, to basically continue to hold it. And the abilities of the Fantask are kind of, well, speed's number one, 45.7 knots base on this build. Pop that speed boost, which is a 20% boost to that. We're in the mid-50s already. So this thing flies around. I believe it's the fastest destroyer in the game right now. If it's not the fastest, it's certainly up there. But using that with the incoming dispersion and, you know, the long range guns, we got 12.2 range on this build. Slaughter is any other destroyer. The next closest one on my builds is 10.9 on the Tashkin. So extremely long range. I think there's a Transformer Commander that's coming out, uh, what is it, a week from Monday, which is going to have an option for even more range for a destroyer. So interesting uh, could be interesting to give a look at that one for this type of build but those type of tools that are baked into this build that allows you to become a distraction factor you can be flying around at max speed shooting at nearly max range those ships are going to have to say to themselves well there's a destroyer i probably want to shoot at it then they're taking their attention off what they should be focusing on which in this particular game is going to be flipping c we're going to effectively hold c down by bugging these people and that's what these french destroyers really do well now to kick this off obviously this is a little dangerous but we did get the friendly destroyer to pop a smoke and then we were able to capture the base if we're going to be a destroyer making an early attempt at grabbing the base all you need to be thinking about is whenever there's a little bit of danger to you get out of there like a madman just run for the hills you don't want to die trying to capture the base right off the bat that's a disaster you want to as a destroyer player in general jettison the mindset of once i'm on this cap either i'm going to die or i'm going to capture it those are the only two options self-preservation trumps both of those options it is by far the better option yes we want to get these caps but we're not going to die or we're hopefully not going to die <laughs> that's not the game plan uh just to get it so luckily there fiji decided to push in Got some nice support, looked like a dev strike from one of our teammates, took him out. And now you can see we've captured C, we got our home base, which is being threatened by a Tashkent, which people on my team refuse to shoot at for some reason. It's one of the worst opening destroyer plays I've seen in a while, and yet he's executing it flawlessly. So, <laughs> that's enough of that. Uh, enough said, I would say. Anyway, we're going to try and get in a position here, move Salt to spot these guys. Now, we don't have a lot of support over here. We need to recognize that. I think it's mostly going to be me and a friendly destroyer for most of this game. But we do have a couple other ships that might potentially uh, be able to capitalize on any spotting we do. So we at least want to give them the opportunity. If my teammates prove to me, beyond a reasonable doubt, that they're not going to capitalize on any spotting, then we'll give up on that concept since there's... No point wasting our time spotting for people that aren't going to use it. Algerie coming in hot, though, and this is a bit of a situation here. Not going to shoot at him because even though he is closing in temporarily as we're turning, we're not going 
full speed, but once we stop turning, uh, go in a straight line, our speed will quickly take us away from him. We're going to get him out of our blue detection ring on the map, drop spot, and because we weren't tapping on the side of his skull by shooting at him, maybe those torps have a chance. You know, he was shooting at the other destroyer, I believe, so he's probably distracted. Most players, you know, for every player, it's harder to focus on multiple ships at once. Most players just straight up can't do it. If they're engaged with one ship, then they can't see anything. They won't look at the map. They won't uh, see what's going on around them. And that'll allow you to get away with plays like this. We do get him with a torp here. I think had we been shooting at him a lot... He would have eventually been like, oh, what's shooting at me now? Then he would have turned like he's doing now, and then we probably would have missed those torps. So usually I like it when the torps are in the water to let them get in there without shooting at the ship at the same time. If you only have, if you have multiple options for ships to shoot at, for instance, shoot at the one that's not under the torpedo attack. doesn't matter if you're the destroyer itself or you're a friendly on the team. If you see those torpedoes en route to something and you got other options to shoot at, go ahead and do that. You know, There's different schools of thought. Some people would always say, try and set the fire. I understand that line of thought as well. But in my mind, you're just, again, tapping them on the side of the skull saying, look over here, look over here, something's going down, and they're more likely to dodge. So we've killed that destroyer off with some help, and now... We're basically going back to defend C. We're trying to slow down the push over here. The enemy kind of heavily weighted on this side to begin with. And we're whittling them down slowly but surely. And now the other side of the map, there's kind of a stalemate. But if you see that long island chain that's roughly running through the center of the map, you know, north to south, those two big islands, it's effectively splitting the map in half. And one half of the map, you got one cap, A. The other half, you got three caps these three over here in a triangle pattern. So this side to me, I don't think the map's been around long enough on our version of the game for patterns to begin with, but analyzing the map, I would say you would always want to control this eastern side. It's much easier to get these three caps under your control and win the game that way. Currently pushing into our cap and see, we've got a Gneisenau, we've got a Bismarck, and we're going to get a lot of firepower down, get those torps down, and then we're going to start shooting right away. Now, at this point in time, we're trying to be the diversion. We're trying to be the distraction. We don't want these guys to feel comfortable about capping that base. Most players, especially battleship players, who are traumatized with their interactions with destroyers, you know, once you allow them to understand that you're there, you're affecting their reality, they're going to freak out and they're either going to run away or they're going to focus on trying to kill you. So, in this situation... You know, we've been keeping an eye on where their guns were before we started shooting. Now we're fine with, you know, maybe even taking a little bit of incoming fire. But we've pulled the Bismarck off now. Uh, we've rattled the Gneisenau's cage. And I think that other destroyer is probably trying to torp him as well. But we've the main highlight here is turning that Bismarck away. He was pressuring that cap. Now we've got it in his head that he's like, oh, look at this guy. I can go over here, kill the destroyer, and then wrap up the cap. So we turned him around. He's following us. Now we're kiting him away from the objective. And this is what we excel at. Clearly we outrun him, and even though he's close to us to start with, we just pop it into drive, and we get out of here. By the time he comes around this island, we'll hopefully have him out of our blue detection ring. Then he'll start to experience pangs of fear, because he'll be like, uh-oh, I lost this dude. And he's probably starting to think about torps coming in. You can see the plane launches there. He probably, if he has sonar, pop that as well. He's probably... Uh, quite fearful at this point in time because even though he was trying to push us, trying to get rid of us, now he's kind of pushed into an advantage that he's completely conceded to us. So this is the distraction factor work. Number one, he's not pressuring that cap. We're still getting those points. You can see the situation as it is right now. We're up a ship. We're tied in caps. But because we controlled C before they controlled A, we do have a substantial lead. So holding on to those caps and holding on to them uncontested kind of the key to the strategy once we saw those torps miss go ahead and take a couple shots let them know okay here's where he is you know we'll yes we'll weather a couple secondaries hooray for germans uh secondary builds you know quite effective as we see but we're quickly able to once again drop spot and then shoot some more torps at them these uh the tier six tier seven and the uh terrible french destroyers you got to understand they have one torpedo launcher in the middle, 
and then one on each side. So you can launch two salvos off one side and then one off the other. And you can either flip around and get all three going at one target or you can get two going one way, one the other. You just got to understand that if you're experiencing torpedoes coming towards you from these French destroyers, the high tier ones, often you're going to see two sets of three and then you're going to go, whew, dodge those. But then it's not uncommon to see another set of three coming 10, 15 seconds later. So you still got to stay on your toes, still expect that third salvo. It's always a possibility. Now at this point, you should understand, as long as he's willing to chase me, you know, I can effectively tie this guy up for the rest of the game. I'm going to start pinging this destroyer. I was hoping he was going to notice on his own. There's the pings, the first set of pings anyways. He's got a clear shot at that enemy central spawn uh, cap. That number one, if we capture that, we'd stop some points accruing for their team. Number two, we get more points coming in our team. Again, it's kind of on our half of the map, separated by those two vertical islands, so it's relatively easy for them to get. All they really have to worry about is the Bismarck, who is finally wised up. He's starting to say, all right, this is ridiculous. Going to go back to doing what I should be doing, getting the cap. Immediately, as soon as we see his attention's turned and his guns aren't pointing at us, we start a tapping right on the side of the skull there. All we're trying to do is irritate him to the point where he's like, all right, that's it. I'm going to deal with this guy once and for all. We want him to turn off here, or if not, we're at least in position to continually reset him until, you know, the end of time, essentially. Just letting him know, no matter what you're trying to do over here, it's ineffective. We've completely shut you down, and there's not a lot you can really do about it. What he should be doing is trying to kill us, yes, but as soon as he tries to do that, we just stop shooting, let him start to get just a little bit of comfort going in his, uh, in his life, and then we just go right back at it. So this is like... <laughs> nightmarish when you're doing this to players and you're doing it well but there's not a lot they can really do about it what the other option he has is really just sail away and maybe that's probably the better option here just concede that we're not controlling c you can see how far to the east we are he'll have a head start in getting back towards something relevant either defending that uh, central spawn point that we're in the process of flipping potentially getting our spawn objective that seems less likely since we're still here effectively defending that but there's other options for him to be you know pursuing rather than just getting constantly harassed by this little flea of a french destroyer but unfortunately for him he made the decision to deal with us which wasn't the worst decision but he made the decision to deal with us by coming around the edge of this island and he proxy spots us he sees that his situation is dire. In fact, his time is up. Song is over. Thought he had something more to say, but he's sunk, sunk again. In fact, he'll be completely he gone right there, so that's the end of the Bismarck. And that's just kind of a fairly obvious example of what you're trying to do. Usually you're not going to be able to tie up one ship's, you know, attention for that long. But that's kind of what you want to be doing here. Just, you know, pop into their existence, slam them with some guns for a little bit. Once they say, hey, there's a destroyer over there and they start shooting at you, just get out of there, stop shooting, drop spot, reposition 30 seconds later, use that speed to show up somewhere else, start doing it again. If you get those torps in, great. But that kind of distraction play is what the Fantasque is really good at. So a French destroyer line, they're going to be challenging. The lack of smokes, of course is tough but you just have to alter how you play them and if you play them well the fan task currently is the epitome of that line and i think it's quite a strong performer there so hopefully you guys enjoyed the look at that one if you did please hit the thumbs up well if you're new to the channel consider subscribing a lot of world of warships coming all the time questions comments leave them below you guys know i love to hear from you and we'll see y'all later peace